Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. So we are talking about multicollinearity, and we have explained pretty much you know different you know aspects of multicollinearity. Now in this lecture, we are actually going to talk about R square and the correlation coefficient in the context of multicollinearity. Now we have seen previously that our R square value is nothing but my R square value in case of simple OLS. Okay, in case of simple OLS, we have actually proved that that this is what we'll get. And let me actually do a little bit of demonstration here. So let us say this is my regression equation. I will just take let us say just a simple one you know explanatory variable. So let us say it is ln, ln labor and I run a regression and what I see is that that the adjusted the R square value is going to be 0.9426. Okay. Now, now I want to sort of see the correlation coefficient among these two. Okay. So, what I will do, I will simply write CORR as a command and we sort of run it and we see it is going to be 0.97, right. So, this 0.97 the small r the correlation coefficient and the r square value is 0 0.94 and why is not why they are not the same because the, here I am just in the in the second table I am only getting the r value not the r square value. If I actually sort of do 9706. Right. So, if I just simply take a square of that, so what I am going to get, I am going to get the value of 0 0.94942. I do not know if it is visible, but let me just increase the font. So, you can see it is 0 0.942. Okay. So, that is basically the R square value. All right. So, this is basically the R square 0 0.942. Now, so that is the case with the simple OLS. We have this uh, equation uh, R square is equal to capital R square is small r square. But what happens when we have like a multiple regression? Because then the <coughs> issue is that my R square, the correlation coefficient uh, among the x, you know, x and y variables. So, you know, like if, if I have if I take different uh, correlation coefficient for different explanatory variable, they might actually overlap. So, we will see what actually happens uh, you know in case of uh, this multiple, reg uh, multiple regression. So, let us say the variability of y is explained by this circle. Okay. Let me actually draw a big circle here. Let us say this is the, this is the variability of y, all right. This is the variability of y. Now, what was happening previously? So, all the variability of y, whatever variability we are getting previously, when I was taking correlation coefficient, the r square was exactly the same because the variability between x and y was again explained by r square. So, they are explaining basically the same thing. Okay. Now, and your r square is explaining the explained sum of square, right? So, it was essentially is explaining the same thing. Now, if the, the problem with multiple multiple regression is that my different x variables, they have some amount of correlation among themselves. Okay, They have some amount of correlation among themselves. And usually what happens is that if you run like, you know, this different x variables will actually explain the different extent of the y, all right, and they will also explain each other. So, there will be overlaps, there will be multiple overlaps and that is why you really cannot say in case of multiple regression that, you know, uh, ideally I could have said that r square is equal to essentially summation of all these small r squares. Okay. But that does not happen because of the overlaps. But if, if for an ideal condition, let us say in an ideal condition where all the r x i x z is, is equal to 0, if the correlation coefficient among all this exponent will mean that there is no overlap. Okay. So, if x1 is explaining this part, x2 is explaining this part and let us say x3 is explaining this part, x2, x3 and let us say x4, they are explaining this 3 part. So, if I get something like this, then, then in that ideal condition my r square is going to be summation of all the small r square. Okay. So, that can happen, but only if this ideal condition is satisfied, but that is very unlikely because the x variables will always have some amount of relationships among themselves. Okay. 
Now, because of this overlap problem, we have sort of derived some other types of correlation coefficient and we are just going to see that. So, one we have learned is that what we normally know is the pairwise correlation coefficient that we have been doing so far. correlation coefficient. Now, we will learn something called partial correlation coefficient, partial correlation coefficient okay. and there is something called semi partial correlation coefficient. We will try to understand these three terms and how they are related. Semi partial correlation correlation coefficient okay now we'll try to understand uh, that the you know how how this each of these terms are related so before that actually, let me actually you know uh, show you instead of uh, how these pairwise correlation coefficient matters so we already have done pairwise correlation coefficient previously where we run the code corr okay so let me go back to the table here so, here you see that when I take a pairwise correlation. So, here we see that uh, in case of uh, you know when we, when we talk about pairwise correlation coefficient, we see that labor log of labor is actually explaining you know like it is 0 0.97, it is very high correlation coefficient. So, we can say that okay, probably log, log of labor is actually explaining all the variability in the output. At the same time, if you take log of capital, it is actually explaining 0 0.97 again. So, it is like explaining everything, all the variability in the model. Now, how do we actually, you know, why it is happening? It is happening because when you take one variable, one particular variable, so what will happen? It will actually capture the variations of other variables as well. So, when you take the pairwise correlation coefficient, the case 1, it will capture the variations due to other variables. So, we gave an example at the beginning that kids education, kids education is actually sort of some function of say father's education and father's income right so that's what we said father's income now if i say you know like let's say these are the two variables which are very prominently explaining kids education now if i actually drop let's say father's income or let's say father's education whichever you want to drop so the other variable will actually sort of the variations that happen due to the other explanatory variables. So, father's income will capture the variations that is happening due to father's education, right. So, that is where it will actually inflate the influence, the variable, you know, the variations in kids' education. And if let us say this is how much father's income, you know, father's income is actually explaining, and this is say father's education, this part education and the overall variability is kids education. The moment you exclude father's education, so the moment in, in your model you do not have father's education, let us say you do not have father's education. So, then your model will it will the variability like the father's income will explain something like this much. Okay? So, almost like everything will be explained by father's uh, income, father's income will in sort of you know show the impact of other variables because the other variables are not involved are not included so all the variability of the other variable which are which you know which are related to you know uh, father's income they will be reflected by father's income okay because you know the, the different other variables which i am omitting they are also related to father's income so because now i do not include those explanatory variables in the regression equation. So, father's income is going to explain most of the variations. So, that is the problem with pairwise correlation coefficient and that is why we have derived the term or derived the uh, concept of partial correlation coefficient. And let me actually explain what I mean by partial correlation coefficient. Now, I will use different colors here. So, let us say this is the again the variability in y. Okay? So, this is how we will try to understand graphically. It, it makes sense, uh, it makes a lot of sense if we do it graphically. Now, if this is father's, uh, you know, the, the y variable, variability of y variable and let us say this is the variation that is happening 
due to let us say x 2 and this is the variation which is happening due to let us say x 3. Okay. Now, what pairwise correlation coefficient does is that it ensures that the variability due to other uh, x variables are actually kept constant. Okay. So, the variability due to other x variables are actually kept constant. Partial correlation coefficient correlation coefficient could be expressed in terms of r say y x 3 keeping my x 2 constant. Okay. So, you can have like many other x variables you know like you can have you can have many other x variables. So, here you can have x 4 or you can have something like x 5. Here what you do is in whatever whatever number of variables you have, so it is going to be say r I just want to I am interested in x 2 let us say r y x 2 keeping x 3, x 4, x 5 constant. Okay. So, this is how we actually express the concept of pairwise correlation coefficient. Okay. Um, so, that is how basically we should uh, see the um, how the how we should understand the pairwise correlation coefficient. Now, mathematical term for pairwise correlation coefficient is basically r y x 1 given x 2 is going to be r y x 1 minus r sorry r x 2 y or a y x 2 whichever you want to write into r x 1 x 2 by by square root of 1 by 1 minus r y x 1 square into r 1 minus r y x 2 square. Okay. Essentially, you do not have to remember this formula. Essentially, it is just to give you an idea that the partial correlation coefficient when you want to keep uh, the impact of some x variable constant. So, you have to basically do this, uh, you know, uh, you have to basically incorporate this uh, this correlation coefficient values here. Okay. So, this is about the partial correlation coefficient and what is the semi partial correlation coefficient? The semi partial correlation coefficient is relatively simple. It is so essentially if I want to you know look at the partial correlation coefficient here. So, partial correlation coefficient for x 5 is going to be this much. So, it really does not take into account the correlation coefficient you know or the influence of other variables. So, everything else is constant. So, I will just get the impact of x 5 on y or if I want to take the partial correlation coefficient between x 4 and y. So, I will get this much. Okay. So, the entire effect by x 4 is actually captured by partial correlation coefficient because I am keeping the other terms constant. right? So, it is not inflating uh, the importance of the x 2 variable x 4 variables here. Now, the semi partial correlation coefficient on the other hand is basically shows the independent contribution. So, what do you mean by that is essentially let us say I want to understand the impact of a, x 2 on y and I want to see the semi partial correlation coefficient. So, it, what it will do? It will basically show this area where there is no overlap, where there is no overlap. Okay. So, if you want to understand the uh, independent importance of a particular variable of so far as the you know the uh, the uh, sort of determining the y, determining the dependent variable is concerned you should look at the semi partial correlation coefficient and here for the semi partial correlation, correlation coefficient we have this is the area of under x2 and for x3 this is going to be the area so where they are essentially independent there is no there is no overlap existing so naturally 
uh, whenever you do whenever you get a semi partial correlation coefficient what you will get is it is less than the partial correlation coefficient value. So, let us actually run our small uh, command and it is like partial correlation coefficient we write P C O R R P C O R R and so now I get the partial correlation coefficient I get semi partial correlation coefficient I get their square values and so forth. So, here you see the ln capital value is becoming 0 0.49 0 0.49 as ln labor is becoming 0 0.49 okay. So, earlier if you remember we had it is almost where is that oh, previously I have done that almost 0 0.97 0 0.97 each right because they are actually explaining the variability due to other factors. And here I have like a very clean uh, representation of the variability by due to ln capital and ln labor whereas for only labor and only capital they are very low alright. So, we got that and semi partial correlation coefficient as we saw it is going to be the smaller segment that, that part where there is no overlap. So, this part is going to be the uh, semi partial correlation coefficient for each of this term. So, ln capital ln labor. So, usually if you sum up the ln uh, you know if you sum up the square of the partial correlation coefficient it will be higher and it will be closer to r square as opposed to if you just square and sum the semi partial correlation coefficient. So, that is basically the idea of this different correlation coefficients and uh, for when you try to understand the multicolority it is advisable. So, previously we have uh, said that you know all these uh, four different ways to understand multicolority if there is, is present or not. So, I will add one more here I will use the same color as before. So, I will add one more here and that fifth is instead of running uh, just simply pairwise correlation coefficient like we proposed in 3 we can propose a case of 5 where run partial and semi partial partial correlation coefficient coefficient. So, this is how, so this is so now we have seen uh, you know uh, all the three different important uh, terms that we deal with in a regression equation the r square the stand standard error and the beta coefficient. So, we have seen how you know it, we should look at all these three terms in case of multicolority problem. Now, with this we will uh, sort of end this lecture. So, we have so far we have talked about all these different you know ways to understand multicolority and we have just given small prop sort of small data set to understand how the multicolority looks like. So, finally, what we will do is we will we will run a sort of a standard regression equation with multiple different variables and we will see all these problems how they look like and how we are going to address them. So, thank you very much with this we will end this lecture here.